I was kind of in the middle of making uh, the next video and I was planning on making some little crankbaits but I decided I wanted to make something a little bit more special or a little bit more substantial so I'm gonna make a duck lure with a buzz blade on the back that took me forever to draw it's four and a half inches long it's gonna to be top water I'm thinking it's only gonna be able to fit one treble hook on it it's supposed to imitate a duckling like a baby duck so it should be interesting to fish with I'm gonna cut the head down to size now. The shape's all blocked out now. So now I just need to carve out the chamfers and uh, get this a little bit more detailed. So now I'm just gonna mark out the profile that I wanna cut the, the top angle of the duck's shape as. So it's just gonna have like a convex curve profile from the top. That's too round, needs something wider. I'm just going to freehand it. That'll do. Now I just need to carve the bill down to what it's going to look like from the top. Yeah, their beaks are a weird shape. They kind of like flare out towards the end. I'm going to try to do that.
That was a tricky little angle to get right. That's all the champ for lines on the body. I'm going to carve the body out first. Now I gotta do the same thing for the head. I'm gonna just stay away from the beak, I think. Cause it's so small and it's gonna need detail. Quack, quack. Okay, I took a little break, but uh, now I'm going to carve the beak and kind of under the beak, that part. It's pretty detailed, so, or it's like pretty small carving, so I got to pay attention. That'll be a hard part to sand, to get something in there and make it look smooth. I'm gonna start standing this thing. Whoops. I noticed on ducks that after the eye and you're going towards the, the bill, it kind of goes concave and the top of the head is more narrow than the bottom. I think I'm going to have to carve that out before I sand the head. That'll be a better flat surface to carve an eye onto. That kind of angles forward. I've got it sanded down enough now. It's ready for uh, detail, detailed carvings like it's uh, wings and around the bill and the eye socket. Probably other stuff that I'm missing, but I'm gonna start carving detail now. Try to get the wings to look the same on each side. Got to put them in the same spot. I'll have to just do that on the other side and then I'll freehand the line that wraps around. I think I'm just gonna eyeball that line that separates the bottom part of the beak from the top. And for the nostril, I'm gonna just poke a hole right there and transfer that to the duck. That is not where I want it to be. Sometimes it doesn't work out, but I'm just gonna use that as a reference and put it up here where I want it to be. That works. And for this line, it's kind of a, like a really slight S that goes concave right there. And then it humps back over.
I should have done that in pencil first, but it worked out. That'll look good. Worked out fine on the eyeball. That gives the drill bit a head start for the eye socket. That's the smallest Forstner bit I have. It's a quarter inch. It's a little bit bigger than the plans that I had for the eye socket, but I think it'll still look okay. I'm actually going to hold it and kind of angle it forward because that's how I want the eye to be. So I kind of have to be careful. A lot of the time when you're doing this, you get some chip out, like right here. The wood grain will start pulling and it'll pull the wood out too. To have it not do that, I cut it. When I start seeing that, I cut it and uh, you won't get that. And I'm just cutting along the line that the Forstner bit made. Sharp bits would work too, but mine's dull. That one had a little bit of pull out too, but I can sand that down and it won't look too bad. Time to start carving. So yeah, I'm just scoring every line that I drew. Then I'm gonna come back and cut material off of one side of the line to make it look like its own feature. For the bill, I'm gonna come back and cut material off this way. So it looks like it's bigger over here than over here because you know a fluffy duckling would have fur coming over the bill a little bit. So yeah, the wings would be outside of the body, so I'm cutting away material from the body to make the wings stand out. The compressor scared the crap out of me. So if I want the wing to stand out even more, I would just repeat that. I'd score another line and then cut to it again. So now it's on to the beak. I've never carved a beak before, but hopefully this goes good. This top part's kind of weird. It's at a weird angle. You're probably not supposed to call these beaks. They're probably called bills. I should look that up. Beaks are sharp and bills are flat. That's a bill. That worked out great. I'm gonna clean this thing up with some sandpaper, make it all smooth, and uh, I still got some things to do. I gotta drill the lead hole, drill the pilot hole for the hook and the everything else, but I'll get back to you when this thing's sanded. Okay, now I'm gonna drill out the lead holes and, or just one lead hole, and all the other pilot holes for it. The lead hole's gonna be half an inch wide, and it's gonna go half an inch deep too. I have to prop it up on something. That's the only way to hold it steady. I 
I broke my only sixteenth of an inch drill bit the other day. But I still have to use it. That's okay though, because if you just start it really well with a punch, it'll still work. So I'm going to use some wood sealer and seal this bait right now before I pour the lead and before I put any hardware in. Because I want to test this bait in the water after I pour the lead and I don't want any water getting into it while I do that. This is just your standard uh, sanding sealer. I'll wait for this to dry, I'll sand it, I'll dip it again, I'll sand it again and that'll smooth everything out and make the details look really nice. And uh, then I'll add the weight after that. Spilled some molten lead on my foot. That doesn't feel good. That wood sealer stinks when you burn it. Sits upright. I need to see how it floats with the hook on it. That's looking good. Yep, that'll do. It's pretty late at night right now, but I want to get this hole covered and that ready to be smoothed off by tomorrow. That way I can paint this thing tomorrow too. Gotta make sure that's level as it dries. And if I see any air bubbles, I usually hit it with a torch. I'll come back tomorrow and carve that smooth. Do one more coat of polyurethane and start painting this thing. I'm gonna go over this bait and sand it one more time, like really thoroughly. I filled the pilot hole with super glue. And now I'm just screwing the screw eye in. This is polyurethane. Once this dries, we'll finally be ready to paint. I'm gonna start with a base coat of white. So it looks like you got your yellow ducks, and that's kind of the traditional, what you think of when you think of a duckling. But then you got ones that have brown on them too. I think that's what I'm gonna to try to go for, is something with some brown stripes, make it a little more interesting than just yellow. I'm gonna start with a yellow base coat still though. It looks like the brown can, it can vary a lot from duck to duck. There's no particular pattern. It looks like all of them have a stripe that goes through their eye but I think I'm just gonna try to be creative with the brown, and just do what I think looks good. It's a start. That's what I've come up with so far. Still have to do the sides. I'm 
going to go back over some of the highlights on the duck with some white and then some of the darker spots on top of the brown I'm going to go back over with black and it'll be almost done. I just need to paint the bill uh, pink, pinkish, brownish it looks like. Maybe a little bit of red. Mixing up a color that I want the beak to be, or the bill, excuse me. I think that's about right. I wanted to keep it light enough to where when I come back and put some pink or red highlights on the tip, it'll still show up. I think that's the best I can paint a duckling right now. Still need to put its eyes on. This bait's getting epoxy clear coats. Try to pull off the loose bristles from the brushes so they don't end up in the clear coat. I always get the tight spaces out of the way first because at the beginning the epoxy is as thin as it will be and it'll start setting up and hardening and it'll get thicker so if, if you got tight spots to try to fit your brush into you should do those first I think. That's definitely an awkwardly shaped bait. I'm gonna have to watch it as it hardens to make sure there's no epoxy pooling up anywhere. And that my rotisserie doesn't break. That was weird. My rotisserie just kinda died for a second. It's only about a year old. It's just a barbecue rotisserie from Home Depot. I'll have to watch it. Looks like it's working fine now. Next step is install the buzz blade on the back, put some hooks on it, and then I gotta go try to catch a fish with it. Got to figure out where to go. Just put everything on. The bead, the blade, and the, the bushing on the back. And then I just bent the wire. That keeps everything on. I just filled the pilot hole with super glue and then glued that wire in. The end of that wire that I put in there, it's bent over, so there's stuff for the glue to catch onto, so this won't just pull out. Now it just needs a hook, and it's ready to fish. I started a Patreon for this channel. On there, I'm actually gonna be giving away every single fishing lure I make in a YouTube video. I actually just started it, so I don't have any right now, so there's a good chance you could win this lure, but yeah, if you pledge anything per month, you're entered to win. So, even a dollar. I thought that'd be a good way of supporting what I do and giving back a little bit too. And if you're not a Patreon, still, thanks for watching. Now let's catch a fish with this thing. Ooh. Something smacked it right when I pulled it out of the water. Wonder what it was. Oh, did you see that? I think it's gar.
I think I'm gonna go to a pond with this thing. I might have the best luck there. I wanna see a fish hit this thing. Well, I guess I already did today, but I wanna, I wanna catch something with it. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna go to a pond. Oof, almost threw that right into a rock. I am getting my butt kicked today. I've been fishing for about three hours overall. All I've gotten is some gars that swiped at it at the river. I'm trying to think of a different spot I could go. Maybe somewhere with pike. Probably the best shot I got is a small river. This will be the last cast here, and then I'll go to a small river somewhere. Any action down there? Uh, one bass lost three lures, so... Oh, crap. <laughs> I've been eyeballing this dam on Google Maps for a while now. Finally gonna fish it. Yeah, I switched my fishing spot again. No shame. I think this is like the fourth one today. It's just a slow day. I might not get anything on this duck, but I'm trying. I only have like 20 minutes on my second camera. Well, they didn't want the little duckling today. That's okay. On to the next bait.